So yeah, this is uh, Johnny Five. Um, first, I guess my name is John Chapman. You can find me on Twitter, at John Chapman. Um, I don't have much on GitHub right now, but hopefully that'll change in the near future. Um, everything you see today, it's not on GitHub now, um, but it should be in the near future after, uh, after today. So let's just get this going. And then we can pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right, so Johnny Five. So I call it Building Skynet. Did I just salute? No. Because really, what else would we build, right? There's no point in doing robotics unless we're building Skynet. So the first question I think we ask is, robotics, why JavaScript? Um, the very first reason I give is because it's familiar, right? A lot of us are web developers. We're using JavaScript every day in our day job. So it's a technology we're already familiar with. Um, but is it any good at building robotics? And it turns out it actually is very good. So um, the good thing is JavaScript is really designed to be asynchronous, right? We're in the browser. We're doing things based on asynchronous user actions. Um, and it's event-oriented based on clicks. This actually translates very well to robotics, because usually what happens is you have many different sensors. And asynchronously, when you get an input from a sensor, you do an action with the robot. Right? If you look at standard you know, C-based robotics programming, you end up having to write your own event loop. Right? So you do your initial setup, and then you loop, and you always keep polling for certain values. JavaScript provides a nice abstraction to that concept, where we can just say, whenever this event happens, now take your action as a robot. So how does it work? So Johnny, or Johnny 5 is a um, Arduino controlling library, but it cannot run itself on an Arduino. All right, so you need a separate host computer. Um, so what happens is the Arduino can be loaded with software called Fermata. And what Fermata is, is it's basically a um, serial-based control mechanism for microcontrollers. Um, so you load that onto your Arduino, and then you connect a host computer to run that. In the case here, what you'll see is I'm actually using a Raspberry Pi. So you have a very compact package. Um, what's also interesting is Intel recently came out with the Intel Galileo, which includes the host computer embedded on the same board as the microcontroller. And Johnny 5 supports that as well. So if you want a one board solution, um, you can use the Intel Galileo. So what's the goal here? Build Skynet. All right, I lie. So we're not going to be building Skynet. So what's the real goal? Um, so what you have here, and you're seeing a little video of it in action, um, is a little robot car made out of entirely of Legos. So I built this from scratch with Legos, using Lego DC motors, Lego servo motors. And then I wrote a library. Um, to read Xbox controller inputs on the Raspberry Pi. And I use Johnny 5 to then control the, the robots, motors, the sensors, the LEDs, and things like that. So you can see the item right here. And in fact, if you don't believe me, I think this should be running. So this is the remote control. So I'm actually looking right and left with the, with the uh, sensor. I have LEDs on the top. And I could drive it, but I don't want to drive it off the edge. So, so it doesn't actually work. I didn't fake this video. So how does it work? First thing you have to do is you have to initialize the board. All right, so do that, right? So we first, everything's written in Node.js. We require Johnny, which is the Johnny 5 library. We get a new board to initialize. We say, once it's ready, do awesome. So what you see here below is um, this is the output that you'll see on your Linux machine or Windows machine or <laughs> Raspberry Pi once everything's been initialized and running. Right, so how do you do things like make an LED blink, right? So again, we do the same sort of initialization. Once the board is ready, you say new Johnny LED. You give it the pin that the LED is connected to, and then you call blink. Then you can pass in optionally a number of milliseconds to, to pulse. So every 250 milliseconds, turn on. Then every other 250 milliseconds, turn off. And there's also a bunch of other things. This is a lightning talk. So there's ways you can turn on, off. You can fade in, fade out. A bunch of other stuff like that. How about driving servo motors, right? So servo motors are things like you know, controlling what angle I'm looking at, right or left, or controlling the steering, whether I'm turning right or left. Um, so the way that you use a servo motor is new Johnny servo, give it the pin it's connected to, and then you can call two and tell it the angle that you want to turn that servo motor to. So a very simple, almost jQuery-like syntax. And uh, the guy who actually is the author of Johnny 5, he is one of the main contributors to jQuery, so. Ping sensors, this is really cool. So the sensor that you see on the, on the front of the robot here, that's actually using ultrasound to determine distance of items in front of it. 
So what it does is it sends out a signal, wait till it comes back, and then based on how long that takes, it can tell how far away things are in front of it. So to do that here, we're saying whenever it changes, um, there's the value, and then we get the ping value and the inches to know how far away it is. You can also get centimeters if you want that, and it works to about 12 feet. So Johnny Five comes with a lot of built-in objects. We have accelerometers, buttons, compasses that you can use much like we've been showing. But what about things that don't, um, that aren't built in? That's where you can work directly with pins. So you can use it much like you'd use an Arduino directly. Um, and there's, I show two different modes here. I actually use the top mode just because that was most like the Arduino framework. But I'd actually prefer to use the bottom if I was being well behaved. Um, so just skipping right to the bottom, we have the concept of pulse width modulation, which I don't want to get into the detail of what that is. You also have digital inputs and outputs. You have analog inputs. And basically, the way you work it is pin.write, and you send the value that you want to write out. So if it's pulse width modulation, you can set a range of 0 to 255. If it's digital, you can basically set it on, which is 1, or off, which is 0. And you can also read from these pins as well. So I also wanted to use Legos, right? Because Legos are easy to prototype with, connect. So what I actually did is I soldered wires to the Lego connectors. And I use it just like as if it was another DC motor or servo. Um, Lego servos don't use standard inputs. So that's a case where I had to use the pin inputs to get this to work. Um, and that's pins of what the robot looks like. Um, so yeah, so there you go. It really works. Running Node.js, pretty inexpensive. And you can build robots in JavaScript. <laughs>